Welcome back to Lynn Farmstead. And the struggle continues. It's real <laughs> around here. What a man can do, a woman can do better. Or maybe not. <laughs> This is a real struggle. Needs a, lot of energy. Needs a lot of energy. Which honestly I do not have. But we're doing it anyway. We are out here collecting cuttings because we want to grow an entire orchard from cuttings. And the starting point is to get the right cuttings. And the right cuttings in this case are rootstocks. And we've had this rootstock growing for the last two years. And it's quite hardy. It's quite mature and very hard to cut at this point. But we're doing our best, which is apparently not enough because <laughs> this needs a lot of energy to cut. But still, we have to the task. not giving up yet <laughs> but next time i'll know better this is not the right tool or the, the right tool in the wrong hands i do not have the energy to cut such which makes me wonder what i'll do when pruning because this is quite the same <laughs> size as all my other wambugu apples and my right hand man, let's see if he has the energy. <laughs> send help, send help. We've managed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine root stocks <laughs> so if this root successfully which is what we hope it will do then we're going to have ourselves nine new root stocks but first they have to root and that might we might not have a hundred percent rooting so we're still not yet sure how many we are saving but look at them and determine which is the upper part that's part going up points and you can determine that by looking at these buds right here the direction they should be all facing up that's how you know this is going to be where the roots are going to take place because of course if you're going to put it downwards like the opposite direction then you're going to lose because they are not likely to root in the opposite direction. So what I want to do is I'll determine where I want the roots to concentrate, which is around this area, and then take off a few of the lower buds, which I will want to discourage from growing, shooting. And then I'm going to like cut a little bit here to expose them, to expose the, the and give a higher surface area for the rooting hormone to work and the rooting hormone i'm using in this case is my natural aloe vera which i have planted in my garden around here so i do not have the commercial rooting hormone but i know you can use especially for this small size of experiment you can use the rooting hormone as aloe vera or even banana but I'm going to go with aloe vera for today and let's see how that works. So let me just expose a little bit. So I'm going to take off these first few buds. Because I love for the roots to concentrate around this area but I'm going to expose where this bud was by just scraping off the upper surface not too much and 
the opposite direction as well, just exposing the, the inner part, not actually cutting the, the thing like that. So I'm going to do this for all the other ones. First you make sure the bats are looking in the right direction. Now this feels like the same way when we do we, we plant cassava because if you, you plant it in the wrong direction then you'll wait for them to root and grow in vain. So the first thing to determine is that they're looking in the upward direction because that's the right direction for the upright direction for them to grow in and then I'm um, just you can you can as well just uh, leave the twigs do we call them twigs of the the root grow without exposing them like this but then again that will mean that all your rooting hormone will be absorbed from this region here which is not a lot but with this we have a higher surface area for the hormone to work that's the reason for that so we get off a few of these lower buds so they don't shoot careful of course and then we expose a little bit by taking off the upper part of the back in the opposite direction as well so I've done that for all the root the, the root stalks and now I want to use this my natural hormone growth hormone or rooting hormone rather just exposing the sap of the aloe vera this is the aloe vera gel and then I'll wipe it on these parts that I exposed the lower part where we expect the roots to be so again I'll leave it for some time so that it soaks in that sap before now I go to the next stage. Now remember this is my first time doing this experiment <laughs> so if you're feeling intimidated as well join the club and let's do this together because these are things I've just harvested from my garden I'm losing nothing but gaining a lot of knowledge and becoming better and better until I can grow my entire orchard, expand my orchard with apple trees that are not going to cost me an arm and a leg to acquire when I can actually do this. Because, come to think about it, everyone that's doing it did not, was not born knowing. They just had to learn from somewhere and then do it. And in some cases, they end up training people that now do it on their behalf. So this is actually just uh, an observation skill. It's an experiment that you can also try at home. Doesn't have to be just the apples. I'm also, I also have a grape, a grape tree that is growing in my garden quite beautifully and I will want to propagate it as well so when this works and I gain enough knowledge on how to do it myself I'm going to actually grow from the cuttings as well you can grow an entire orchard from cuttings turns out because some of the things that I know and have practiced for a very long time since childhood is the mulberry the mulberry grows so easily, so whenever you prune, all the cuttings you have are potential, potential plants. You can grow an entire fence of mulberry using just a few cuttings. And if this turns out to be the same way, now with mulberries, I don't even have to go through all this struggle of fruiting hormone and stuff. 
but of course you know we want to graft this so that's why we're giving it special attention but for some there are trees that you just take the cuttings like cassava stick it to the ground and for as long as there's moisture in the ground they sprout and then you take it from there i love cassava because you don't even have to do lots of manure at least in my case i don't and you have a lot growing and you get to preserve the variety that you love because you can propagate it over and over again now look at this this actually took such a little bit of the aloe vera i just took a small cut i had to but turns out I don't need all of them. So I'm going to give this a minute or two to soak in the, in the aloe vera juice. And then I'm going to like now go to the next step. So, oh, our compost, it's well cured. It now looks like soil. Totally, you can't see the manure anymore. And this is what we're going to use to grow them because it's enriched with nutrients and then we you should let it be wet rather than soggy so we will be spraying just spraying a little bit of water and again it's lying here against the wall where there isn't direct sunlight this is where I also grow my dania potted dania and stuff because it doesn't receive direct sunlight so it's not going to like overwhelm the new plant before it takes root there is sunlight there's light but it's not direct sunlight but i'll also keep spraying and if it starts to rain again right now it's the the rain has taken a pause if it starts to rain again i can easily transfer it indoors or somewhere safe where it doesn't get waterlogged so the the cuttings have been sitting in the in the hormone the aloe vera gel for some time now it's kind of starting to dry out the gel and you want to put them into the ground immediately before they start to dry out while they're fresh i don't know why most people put the stalks in a slant but i'm going to copy that and the good thing with these markings, it's easy for you to remember which part goes <laughs> is the upper one and the lower one. So this is the one that you want to root. I'll put it in in a slant. This is how we also do for the cassava plants. So I'm kind of <laughs> also coping from that experience and hoping for the best. This is our first experiment. If it succeeds, we are well on our way to making our own seedlings to save a little coin here and there. Not just for apples, you can try this for other trees, but of course do your research first and make sure they also do grow from cuttings before you, you spend a lot of time and energy <laughs> in doing this. And this is how they look like right now. Super. The greenish color tells you that they're all fresh. And we hope for the best. Fingers crossed. If you also, like me, have this talk somewhere in your garden, I'd love for you to also go and do this experiment alongside mine so that we can compare notes in a month they should be rooting within a month of course you want to if you're going to try it you want to resist the desire of just coming every day to check if they're rooting or not <laughs> now this is going to call for a little bit of ex uh, patience which i'm realizing in this journey of farming we need a lot of patience in so many things because most of these things are taking place underground and we might not see the changes but something is actually happening when the seed goes into the ground and dies and then it sprouts you might give up on it before it's due time and lose a good crop because of it but 
will exercise patience and check. I'll do an update video in a month or two. And if all goes well, this is 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, <laughs> 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9,000 saved. What the waiting period, of course. <laughs> so help me God. And then, of course, I'm going to graft. So while these are in here trying to get the roots going, I'm going to be learning about grafting so that by the time they're done, I, I can actually now graft any any variety that i wish onto them i'm thinking especially to go with the golden dosit the red uh, the, the pink lady or the braiban variety i don't have the braiban variety right now but i hope to get a few now with this knowledge i know that i i just need to get a few branch a few legit seedlings which I can then grow over time and then take cuttings whenever I prune, I can now be grafting onto them because I already have enough Wambugu apples and because I want a, a wide variety in my farm, I'm not going to graft in more Wambugu apples onto this, but I'm taking this rootstock as my base for expanding my garden to other varieties, especially the Braban variety, which in my research, I've noticed that it has better pollination chances. So I'm going to do a lot of that. And of course, this is not the only thing I'm going to do to increase my chances of success. I'm going to also try another style of fruiting the, the, the stalks. Instead of just waiting for this one, I'll try another one that I'll show you in another video where I'll try to graft the cuttings, or not to graft, but to root the cuttings in a different way and see whichever succeeds the first, we go with that in future. Now, as always, at Lean Farmstead, we are the guinea pigs here and we hope that you get to learn from our experience and then apply it in your farm with better success because you've seen no tracks and what does not work. Join the community of researchers in apple farming, especially in the tropics, by subscribing and check the comments for more information. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of people commenting about the feedback. And if you've ever tried this, tell us what works so we don't have to go through all these afresh we can learn from your experience please let us know down below in the comment section and if you're going to join in this exp experiment if you're going to do it in your farm let me know down below so that we can compare notes over time and see what works and what does not work all the best this is damp i'll just be sprinkling a little bit of water i i just pray not like pour a lot of water to keep the soil damp but not waterlogged and if it rains i'll get it to a safer place where it doesn't get waterlogged because then the roots might the, the stems might uh, rot before they get to root all the best in your garden let's win together